In Second Life, there are parties and live concerts taking place 24-7. I can assure you there is a party going on somewhere on the grid right at this very moment. Birthdays, rest days, weddings, commercial and charity events, even funerals. A rare one will not have a concert with live musicians or a party with live DJ. By the way, have you got my stellar course lately? Second Life music entertainment industry has conquered the grid, and now each entertainer from the field is fighting hard to get you onto the position of the regular. So, has the supply of your music entertainment surpassed the demand far beyond acceptable, and has resulted in, in the oversaturation of the clubs we do not need? Or is this merely a product of the artistic environment Second Life has flourished as, and therefore does not pose any threat to the grid? My name is Kitty Burnett, and this is The Grid Unraveled, the brand new talk show in which we utilize both voice and text floor to make sure everybody is heard. We will be highlighting Second Life phenomena each week, and we, along with the special voice panel of field professionals, will be discussing everything that is worth an in-depth discussion. Today, we are talking about the Second Life music and clothing industry. So, before we commence this conversation, let us get acquainted acquainted with our voice panel. We have got various representatives of the music entertainment industry fields and professions with us today. And we will begin with uh, the Woods club owner, Lila Rodenham. She's the owner of uh, uh, the Woods club, uh, which plays mostly in electronic music. From what I know, it exists since 2008. Lila, great to have you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next, we've got Rick, Rick Itame. He's a DJ of many years, not only in Second Life, he actually began with in real life. He's got um, a recording studio in real life, I understand, Rick. Is that right? Um, yes, that's right. Yes. Great to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, we also know that music and entertainment industry is not the only one industry on the grid, so we've got a representative of uh, some other entertainment type. This is Why Not, and she's a comedian in Second Life. Why Not, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. All right. We also have got a club host. Uh, she's working tirelessly to greet us and uh, to um, keep the club in mood. This is Desi, she hosts info clubs and she also trains new hosts who, who will get you in the club in mood in your, in your next party. Desi, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, it's an honor. First. And finally, last but not least, <clears throat> please welcome Bones Writer, who is a musician here. Uh, who has come from real life, I understand, right? Yep. And has also uh, got a venue which um, has helped promote, to promote many Second Life musicians. He's been having it for 10 years. And uh, is it still up and running? Yes, it is, yeah. It's All right. Been for 10 years, and thanks for it's, having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you all. So, we will begin our conversation with here and out the audience. From what I see, we have got many people from uh, the music entertainment industry itself in the audience, who I hope will participate in the, in the discussion and uh, perhaps uh, provide us with, theirs, with their point of view. Uh, but we also have some people who are merely clubbers and um, just take interest in it. Uh, so, I believe you all have an opinion on what's going on with the music venues because, uh, like, it's hard to miss. I will ask you a couple of questions and to each a couple of questions. To each, please type your answers in the local chat. Do not I am in any of us and uh, do not open your voice. Let's keep it all in local chat. And um, those questions of yours, those answers of yours, I mean, uh, they will give us some kind of perception of the clubbing cultures in Second Life. So, first of all, please tell us, 
Do you go to music events such as parties with live DJs and concerts with live singers? Uh, to those of you who work in this industry, please answer as uh, somebody uh, who um, uh, like uh, visits those at uh, their free time. Of course, we know that you spend uh, time on the stage and in clubs, uh, but uh, like after work, do you still go to parties or do you uh, like relax some uh, someplace else? Sorry, I do when I have the time. Uh, I do enjoy uh, live singers in particular because they are so phenomenal here in SL. Um, and I do enjoy just hanging out in the clubs and just listening to great music. Oh, I, I also go to uh, many of the clubs with different genres. When my club is closed, I also go to live shows as well as um, live blues shows as well because I like other types of music as well. Mm -hmm. So as I can see, we have not only providers, but customers at the same time. The panel. Yes. It's fantastic. What about others, Absolutely. by the way? Get them, uh, get them answers coming. Audience, please. We want Absolutely. to hear you as well. I've done the same thing where um, I go in and have enjoyed pianists, uh, pianists and uh, all kind of different musician, musicians and uh, uh, genres of clubs too. Um, not just playing music, but also listening to others has been a great thing in Second Life for me. Oh, that's nice. And what about the other two guests? Why not? Bones? Yeah, I... I go ahead. Uh, two of the comedy places that I do comedy, they have... Well, one has a DJ and the other does live music following the comedy. So, um, there are still... Oh. I understand those are comedy clubs, right? Yeah, I'm in three different comedy clubs, and two of them have music. One does DJs, and the other gets live singers. Okay. Yeah, and I've, I, I really I love supporting live music in Second Life, and it's, um, you know, I'm, after I play, I, I'll go and see other friends who are playing in here as well. Um, and it's it's always inspiring to hear people from around the world, you know, and what what music interests them, and so I'm um, always interested in going and hearing others. Oh, definitely. Uh, okay. Absolutely, it's kind of we inspire each other. Um, yeah. In lots of ways, sure. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the audience. I saw some people typing, but uh, somehow they stopped. Oh, there you go. Okay, so on receipt answers, she, she goes to lots of clubs to hear and sing or relax. Mm -hmm. What about others? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Kane, who is a DJ himself, also goes to events, club singers. Same here. So we've got plenty of clubbers over here. One of the clubs that I am in, uh, Grease Lightning, uh, has live singers, and I try to get to as many of those events as I can because they do have some good singers. I would like to attend some comedy shows, so why not? I'd like that landmark. <laughs> well, there will be an opportunity for all of you to tell us some more about the venues in which you, um, uh, like, perform and work. Okay, so Victor Gelli, the co-owner of Woods, also a DJ, is always in clubs together. Uh, Victor, could you please elaborate? Are you always at Woods or do you go to other clubs with Lila? Nick also spends a lot of time clubbing. Yeah. Uh, Up Hope, sports other DJs and clubs. So for Pumpkin, it's also a matter of supporting. It says, Victor says that when it closes, that's when we wait. We have some clubs and certainly left parties. Okay, Ayla, could you please elaborate 
uh, do you club only at the club? Um, I mean, do you party only at club that you own, or do you go to other clubs? Yeah, I list happen. I can see that. So, Sonris is loves to go to international clubs to hear different styles of music. Well, definitely, uh, uh, European style, uh, from what I see, is like universal, but uh, of course, there are other music styles. Okay, so thank you very much for your answers, everybody. I can see that people keep on arriving. Please take your seats. I'm not quite sure if any. If there's any left, okay, yeah, there are. This is great. And well, also, I've got I'd another. Like to add that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, what's uh, up? This, as far as international, um, that's one of the best things about Second Life is that um, you get to experience so many different um, types of music. Mm -hmm. and, hey, uh, that's a great point, and actually. People yeah. and um, I've always uh, appreciated that. You know, you, there's mm -hmm. a lot to be that you can learn from. Um, you know what I mean? So it's yeah, not uh, just like entertainment, but also a cultural trip. Absolutely, sure. Great point, actually. Okay, audience and of course, um, uh, the panelists, I've got another question for you. I'm very curious about how do you choose which event to go to? Like, there are so many clubs in Second Life. Uh, of course, you have to make a choice. You uh, cannot, like, go to all of them at the same time. So, how do you make a choice? Um, well, I, I try to see, uh, of course, my friends. I have singers, live singer friends, and... and uh, DJ friends and things like that, and I try to go to their sets regardless of the clubs that they're in. It's not necessarily the ones that I work in either, but I like to support them as the best that I can. Uh, okay, so mostly uh, to listen to friends of yours, right? Yes, and you know, I've got a couple of spam groups, and sometimes things will come up in there, like, oh, maybe I'd like to go see that, so I'll go over to there and, and check that out, too. Yeah, I, um... Go ahead. Sorry. I like going normally where the music is my personal taste. I also like to support um, a very close friend of mine who is also a club owner, the owner of Energy. I like to support him whenever I can, um, being that it's one of the oldest clubs in Second Life. Mm -hmm. I also like to go to live events and I usually depend on TPs from friends who are at different events, and uh, I... So you I don't mind to, my STPs? No, I don't, and I ask TP all the time. And I like to go from place to place to place, as long as the crowd is friendly and it's active and talking and the music is good, then you're pretty much ensured to have a good time, even if it's not your taste in music. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the people are fun, then I feel like you're going to have a good time either way. So social sure, component absolutely. is also... Yeah. A, Right, it's an yes. important and integral part of any um, venue. Mm -hmm. Of course, I totally agree with you. Um, by the way, audience, please keep the answers coming. You are part of the uh, of the conversation, so please keep typing. And also, I'd like to add to to Leila's um, comments that um, I mean, yeah, I've, um, been, I've been out and I do go and see a lot of friends and have met a lot of really great new friends lately. Uh, I mean, even Kane is one of them, and oh, uh, and Jazz in the audience there. And um, you know, I think it's a great part of getting out and and definitely seeing friends that are um, playing great music and um, experiencing that. Um, 
is I, it's a great thing to me. Mm -hmm. Of course. So you are like uh, Jesse, you well, and um, Lila, you mostly uh, go to the events that uh, like feature friends or hosted by friends. Well, yes, that too, but like I said, you know, from the other spam groups that I get, I'll see an event that'll come up and it may be jazz or it may be blues or something because I like all genres of music and I'll just go and, and I'll, from a blind uh, uh, notice, I'll just go over and I'll check out a club or I'll check out to see what's happening and, and you meet a lot of great people that way and uh, I agree with you that the chat is very important to keep it going and to be it friendly and if it's a friendly club you're going to want to stay and you're going to enjoy the music as well and you're going to meet great people. Yeah, of course. Absolutely, I totally agree. Um, okay, yes. well done. Before we move on to Why Not and Bones, we've got some answers from the crowd. So as it says, sometimes to make uh, making a choice is hard. It depends on the mood um, she's in and the style of music supporting the menu, uh, the venue, and um, the club is very important, of course. So it's mostly depending on the mood for some researchers, I understand. Um, Isla says the electro techno skin, uh, scene is not so big here in Silicon Life. Uh, so uh, she believes. Uh, like uh, to go back to what Lila says, um, uh, she is the owner of the Electronic Music Club, um, and she said that uh, there is another club, Energy. Um, I, uh, most of the electronic clubs uh, owners know each other, and uh, so the groups send uh, most time out. Where is the party today? To what it's referring to, I believe uh, that's uh, about. Uh, being part of the group, Ayla, please correct me if uh, I got uh, something wrong. All right, Kane also says um, he will go to events at all different clubs, venues, etc. Uh, what he may feel he would like to go and listen to. Okay, so I understand Kane also go, uh, choose the event depending on his mood. Uh, Pumpkin Spice Garcia says, with meeting great people come supporting not only the DJ of choice, but the club, club owners, hosts, managers, of course, because we're working in the same field, become friends, and club hosts uh, hope to support everyone. I'm quite interested about this club hoping thing, because like if you go to a club uh, for five minutes and then go to another club, just for the sake of supporting everybody. It's uh, like not exactly um, being the supporter of the club. Because five minutes uh, don't usually do it. <laughs> I think I think everybody has ADD these days. I think if, oh my God. <laughs> it's, just hard, it's just hard for people to focus in on, on one thing. And Second Life seems to be like a perfect place for anybody who's got ADD because you can just kind of flit about and you get bored in five seconds and you're on to the next thing. So, and I think we've all kind of learned to deal with one another on that level. You know, you're, you could be standing in front of somebody and in five seconds they're gone and you don't always take it personal. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, Bones, what about you? Uh, how do you choose where to go to? Um, I think it's really based on, you know, people that you, that you're familiar with. I, I deal with so many musicians every day and there's, there's all, so many great players here. So, but it's hard to see everybody. So, you know, when you just like, like most everybody on the panel and in the audience, when somebody, you know, a friend sends an invite or you see, you know, some notice coming from some group that you belong to and it kind of piques your interest, you know, those are kind of the things that make us get up and go out and support one another and, and go check things out. And if you see somebody that's new or a friend teleports you, I think those things bring us to different places. Oh, Joey and Cherry's going to be loud. Is Cherry there? This I can barely hear you. What did you say? Excuse me, would you please repeat it? <coughs> I am so sorry. I oh. thought my mic was muted. <laughs> I, no, I'm, no problem. 
Just so you know, if you hear another voice coming over my microphone when I am talking, I am sitting three feet from my real and SL husband, who is a DJ, and he's doing a 9-11 event right now. And I thought oh. my mic was muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, no problem. Okay, so why not? I believe you have not answered yet. So what yeah. about you? Well, I, I have to say I used to explore a lot more before I got involved in dance and comedy and and shows and stuff like that. And when I explored, I found some really cool bars with some great singers. And so I was introduced to some that way, but probably most of the singers I've been introduced to have been through Friends and Second Life like the rest, and especially Abby Rose Abbott, who's here now. And um, at the uh, one comedy club that's Lauren's place on Tuesdays, where we have uh, singers come in at the end of the show frequently, if not every week, I, oh, yes. We actually have a comedian singer, Sarah Marie Philly. I love her. And so if I hear she's doing something, you know, I try to join the groups when I can. Um, I try to go and see those people. I've fallen in love with several of the people that I was introduced to through my friends as well. So as I can see, it all boils down to networking. Yeah, so, it is. You no. Know. Okay. So let me see if we've got something else in the chat. Mm -hmm. That's a good of and second ALS says that's the good uh, second life when you do not like the music in this club, you can go to other places definitely. You don't have to spend like a lot of time on the road. Uh, you don't have to spend uh, money on a taxi. So yeah, that's great asset. Well true. But it's always good to show support to uh to people that you meet um that are working hard and um you know doing a good job, I think. I understand. Uh, uh, so, I understand, like, going to club uh, out of respect? When your friend is DJing or hosting or giving a concert? How, oh, sure. like, Usually uh, I will stick around it? most of the time um, and try to uh, show support. So, even if you don't like it, you stay nevertheless? Well, not necessarily. I mean, if I don't like it, then that's a different story. Sure. Yeah. You know, that makes me think of uh, like uh, those Christmas <laughs> concerts uh, that, uh, that uh, your school organizes where, you ch uh, where children go. And uh, you go there and you listen to a child out of respect, out of respect so, you, uh, so you don't hurt his feelings, right? <laughs> right, right. It's like... Uh, is that the case? That happens mm. all the time. It it also happens in the um, club scene. Many people go to clubs. Many people don't listen to the music. Many people go just to support a friend, and they're on YouTube or Facebook or some kind of other social media, and they're doing a million other things. Um, they go to have their body there and show their friend that they're supporting them, but they'll they won't be listening to the music um, you know what i have to agree with you on that Layla, because i know that there's been i've seen other friends that will be on voice or skype and not really i mean they'll be listening to the music sort of but i mean kind of trying to multitask at the same time okay so like uh, you can just toggle the music off not like in a real club when where you are like surrounded by music and yeah. just uh, park yourself and uh, turn on the dance animation and that way. And go AFK, like a lot of people do. <laughs> that way you contribute to the crowd, but uh, you don't have not, to listen to the Not to the listeners, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, Ayla adds that she can only see for herself, but uh, she shows all the music and... Story. She has an ear for good mixing, and uh, when it's not good or to strange styles, then uh, she um, leaves the club. Okay, so Ella pretty much says that um, if uh, it's uh, uh, the music that's playing there is not to her taste, then she leaves. Huh, it's interesting, there's uh, somebody who actually listens to the music in the clubs the crowd <laughs> so there's we have a lot of vips sorry 
Of course, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Okay, Abel Rose also says she goes to listen to music and uh, she minimizes the screen and uh, plays music on the background while she works on designs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, actually another purpose of the club. They made the music, I think, really, uh, and uh, <laughs> Bones uh, will agree that uh, this also works for the musician. Um. Well, there's so many things just wrong about that, <laughs> but but I, well, why not? I understand it. Uh, being a musician, you know, we hope that we play for people who really want to listen to our music. But Second Life is its own little world, you know, and we've mm. got we're faced with all different things, and it's very in a, in a lot of respects, it's much like real life, where you know, clubs and bars are the mating petri dish of the world. Of the world, <laughs> that's it true. Seems to be the same thing in Second Life. You know, I mean, people. You know, I, I know that some of the more popular bands here. You know, well, when I monitor their, because I ran streams out to musicians as well. You know, when you monitor a stream like the band The Follow, who's been one of the more popular bands here. They, they may have 75 people at their show, but only 50 of them are on the stream. Well, now, the same thing. The same thing goes for clubs. You'll yeah. have a popular DJ or maybe not such a popular DJ. And in certain clubs, you'll have a lot of people there on, in the club, but you'll only have 15 listeners when there's right, 40 people. Or you'll have a club with 25 people and you'll have 27 listeners because people are listening outside also. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's very it's common. Really it it varies but it's so it's very similar to real life situations i mean i think the other thing is is that it that uh, you were saying something about you know when you people go to a club and they don't like something they'll they'll stay there to support them well you know we do because second life is kind of you know um we, we're kind we have every community everybody is invited to do whatever they want i mean if i want to go up and spit wooden nickels out my mouth for entertainment i certainly will hey, i my pay right to see to that. that yeah so oh my see, God. see you're gonna pay <laughs> and somebody else is gonna come and go i'm out of here <laughs> but, but it's the same thing with you know a lot of the people who come in here there are some really talented people in second life no doubt but we also with that comes a great deal of mediocrity in music. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's that's kind of what the internet has born <laughs> in the music industry. Gotten, you know, everybody has a computer, everybody has a recording program, and now everybody's a musician. And having been a musician working in the film industry and working on shows and being recording with well-known artists for, for the last 45 years, there's a big difference between somebody who spends a career learning and becoming a, a, an accomplished musician to the, as opposed to the hobbyist from Sheboygan, Illinois, who, whose husband says she, they, she, she's a great singer, but she really isn't. But the, the great shower thing singer. About, yeah, the great thing about Second Life is there's room for everybody. And that's kind of the unusual thing. In, in Second Life is that it's uh, different than any other place where, where most of these people who come in here to sing would never be able to get a, a real life job actually performing because they're not, they're just hobbyists. But at the same breath, that's you know, a good point. Um, you know, mm -hmm. in the same breath, they, they, a lot of them will probably would be scared to death to get up on a stage. And, sure, the majority, oh, yes. and, a, and a great vast majority of them know nothing about music. They just love to sing and they love music. So we have a really, and Second Life is really amazing in that way, is that we can, we kind of nurture and, you know, kind of help everybody. And the, the real, the one thing I wanted to say before is that having run tracks for 10 years, I've watched really beginning singers and musicians who have come into Second Life who are afraid of playing in front of an audience or really weren't that accomplished. And now years later, because they've had so many places to play, they've really grown as musicians and writers and singers. And they've, you know, people, it's an incredible opportunity with, the, with places disappearing for musicians to play in real life. This is a really 
um, wonderful place for, for people to really try out and, and, and increase their knowledge about their craft. Well, it's yeah, the same absolutely. in the True. club scene and with DJs, there's always the potential for growth and to get better as with musician, musicians, mm -hmm. there'll always be more places popping up. And here, most people, I mean, not most, but there are a large majority of people in Second Life that can't do these things outside, whether they have a disability or some kind of affliction or something, but yet when they come here, they get to be who they want to be and do the things that they've dreamed of. And exactly. I think that's what makes oh, yes, Second Life good. such a great place. Yep. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would like to, uh, uh, if I can interject, I would like to hit on what uh, Abby Rose said. Um, yes, I do interact with the crowded voice, but beyond that, um, your earlier question, it really doesn't bother me. Um, if you're enjoying the music and you go to design something, it, uh, that's not a problem for me. You know, you're still enjoying it. You're, uh, it doesn't uh, have to mean that you have so to So it's be not like necessary for you putting, to, uh, um, with crowd to play gestures to like... Total all the time. ...acknowledge uh, you that they're still there. Like if they, they are just silent, but you see that uh, they're connected to your stream. Are you fine with that? Or is that necessary? Is that crucial for you? Uh, so. Uh, uh, well, I mean, it's good to be heard, sure. And I, I understand what Lila's saying too, because I've, I've checked the stream and seen, you know, who's listening and who's not. But I mean, if there are some that are and enjoying it, then that's, that's good with me, you know. Of I agree with that. As a host, with my husband being a DJ as well, we do work together in several clubs. And once in a while, I get on there and he'll play a song and I'll sing along with the song. And of course, I tell him, don't let me break your ears because I'm not the greatest singer, but I enjoy singing. And all of the VIPs in the club are egging me on. Come on, Desi. Come on, Desi. Sing, sing. You know, and so I, we have a good time and we play around with things like that because as a host... I'm there to make everybody feel like they're at home. I greet everybody as soon as they come into the club. I try not to miss any. Of course, you, there's imperfections, and once in a while you do, but I also keep my tags up, and I can see who's in the club, and if I see a name I know I didn't greet, I'll ask them how they're doing, or I'll get personal with them, or I'll go in and I'll... I'll look around and I say, okay, who's got the best boots in the house and I'm going to steal your boots, things like that. So you got to make people feel like they're welcome in the club. It's not all about the music sometimes, but it, yeah, they've got to enjoy the music. But if the host is not there for the VIPs, which is the most important part in a club, is the VIPs because without them, you wouldn't be there. So you have to make them feel very, very welcome. And once in a while, like I said, I'll get on there and I will sing. And you know, but I cut up with everybody. I greet everybody. I let them know that they are important to the club, and I want them there as much as they can be there. Being in four clubs uh, is is great because I've met wonderful people from all over the world and I, I just thoroughly thoroughly enjoy hosting I've been doing it now for a total actually over seven years although my age doesn't show that but yes I've been doing it for over seven years and I, I just I love people and they know it they can feel it from me they can feel my attitude and as well as for a DJ if you you know you if you don't show that to them that you want them there that no matter how good your music is, sometimes they're not going to want to come back because they don't feel you want them there. That is a really so, good point. That is a very good point. I totally agree. And, um, I mean, I think that is a host or a hostess doing a very good job. You know, like you said, making people feel at home, uh, you know, and kind of, you know, making things light and maybe cutting up sometimes is a good thing. And I love that, you know. I oh, yeah, I'll get, down, I'll get down off the stage and I'll go up to people and say, hey, come on, jam down, you know, get them pixels moving. And mm -hmm. I'll, walk, I'll like go around voice. to the different different people and because I know them personally. They've come so much to my clubs that I'm in that I had one was hosting for a DJ and I got an IM from him saying, well, you know, this uh, female had come into the, she goes, well, where's Desi? Well, she's sick today. She left. She was there for me, you know, which which touched my heart that that they appreciate with me. And of course, I was nominated for Abby's Choice last year for favorite host. I didn't win, but the honor was there, and I absolutely loved that. And it was the first time in all the years I've been hosting that that happened. 
but I, I love people, and you have to make them feel like they belong in that club, and you want them there, and keep conversations going with I them. I don't think it's just the hosts either. I think that the some of the DJs, not DJs, but the um, singers, the live singers that I go to see, they recognize people who have come regularly, and they not only try to beat new people coming in, the singers themselves do, but they also say, hey, why not? Good to see you again. And that makes me want to go see that singer again, you know? Right. That well, goes I, for all staff. That, that goes for all staff, whether it's yeah. a DJ yes. or a singer or a comedian or, you know, uh, any type or of manager. an entertainer or a host, a manager. Exactly. It's a team That effort. club is home. Those VIPs are the most important people in SL to you when you are doing your job. And they need to know that. I think you both touched on something um, really interesting because music or comedy or musicians kind of bring people together, is my opinion. And the friends that I've made through music, I've kept for more than eight years, you know. And so, I mean, it's interesting. It brings us together. Mm. Exactly. So, about the regulars, you see, uh, inevitably, when there is uh, some club uh, that has regulars, sometimes they form cliques that, like, um, greet each other and um, uh, talk to each other, of course, that's absolutely normal, but um, sometimes uh, when you come to the club where there is such a clique, uh, you see people uh, talking about uh, about something and having fun. You are also uh, are trying to join the conversation, but you are getting ignored for the sake of them uh, to um, like uh, talk to each other more. Uh, how do hosts deal with that, Desi? When such situation arises? Okay, he's on mic right now. I'm gonna cut my mic. Um, I join in with the clicks and then I pull other people into it. Uh, you know, well, what do you think about that? You know, this and that. And we've got one couple that comes into one, in, into uh, Muddy's country and we're always, everybody's on them about getting married or getting engaged and it, it's it's a big ha-ha, you know, even to them. that they're, they're in on the joke or whatever, but everybody in the club starts jumping in on it. It's not just the few people or their sisters or their fun. We, I get everybody else involved, if I can, into a conversation with the cliques because it does happen. It really does happen. And, you know, I'll go over and I'll, I'll point, well, well, you know, well, you know, hey, Bones, what did you think about that? You know, and ha, ha, ha. And then, then Bones would say something. And then all of a sudden somebody else says something. And then somebody else says something. And then you get the cliques involved with everybody in the club. But you have to, you have to keep you have to keep everybody involved in the conversations, not just one or two people talking all the time. Yeah, so I, I will address a different person by name in chat and pull them into the conversation. That's great. I wish more hosts did that because um, <laughs> like sometimes I come to a club and uh, they like introduce Katie, meet the, the craziest. I'm proud on the grid, and uh, I feel already like I'm not part of the crowd that is over there. You'll never feel like that in any clubs that I work in. <laughs> That's great. I have I, I have, gr I have grease lightning. <laughs> no, honey, I have 12 shifts a week now. I have grease lightning. I have retro where I am a senior host and I do train all the hosts that come through there. I have Muddy's and Muddy's Country. And with 12 shifts a week, I can't hardly ever really pick up fill-ins. But, you know, I'm, I'm, because I have to have a little time to play. <laughs> so that's when I go club hopping and stuff. With, uh, I've got a very close sister in SL and we go around and we go to different clubs and, and different genres and stuff like that to relax, to get away from the work. But I, I love my work. I, the VIPs are my friends. I love every one of them, even if they're not on my friends list. I call them sweetie. I call them girlfriend. I call them, how's my friend doing today? I make them feel like they're my family. And you, you have to do that. And because of that, they keep coming back and the crowds are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Because I do work with some excellent DJs. I've got... You you My clubs, I've got some of the best DJs that I get to work with. I'm so proud of them. I think there's... I'm sorry. From, 
from being in the club scene for a very long time on Second Life, you have to love what you do. If you don't love what you do, then you shouldn't be doing it. Exactly. And she loves what she does, and that is inviting and makes people feel comfortable and people want to come back. Um, if you're there and you're silent and you're <clears throat> not greeting or you're part of a little clique, it, 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 it's not a welcoming atmosphere for people. No, it's That's not. That's a really good point, Lila. And uh, I think all of us that are here love what we do, and that's why we do it. So I totally agree with you. True story. Okay. Uh, I would like to remind uh, voice panelists uh, to sometimes check out the uh, local chat because people are adding their comments over there. And as we go along and talk about uh, certain subjects, would like uh, to uh, like make sure that we did not miss anything. Uh, for example, I have seen uh, something from Ayla. Uh, let me come back to her message. She said that um, uh, she says that uh, sometimes it's strange. Uh, there, there a new club appears. Uh, there is a DJ playing, and um, if uh, when that DJ plays, he um, uh, thinks that uh, he's now a DJ and he needs to create his own club and DJ in his own club and uh, be also a new owner. Rick, would you like to uh, comment on that? I'm sorry, what was the question? As a... um, it's not as much of a question, but um, uh, more of a statement. Like uh, every individual can be a chief on himself because uh, like opening a business is very easy in Second Life. You just buy a patch of land for like um, a little, uh, very little money compared to oh, real right, life. right, sure, sure, that's true. I mean, um, I don't know, there's been a lot of good clubs that have come along, and like you've said, it's it's easy to do, but then again, it's not so easy. It's easy to buy a patch of land, yes, but it's not so easy to make something out of it and, you know, have good people come, uh, and I mean good people as in, you know, I don't know, Layla should uh, comment more on that, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, wait a second, Layla, before you yes. uh, go, I would okay. like to translate um, a message from Victor, who says opening a club is one thing, but keeping it, keeping it well, open that, is another. That's the whole point. Um, there are, the music scene in SL has changed so much over the years. There used to be um, a limited amount of clubs with little choices for people to go. But as time has passed, it has evolved with um, the population growth and the influx of residents who want to DJ. And with more and more genres coming into SL, the club scene today has exploded. Each and every day, there's new clubs opening, sadly. Many of them close just as fast because um, it's one thing to open a club. Anybody could do that. But if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have a proper team <clears throat> and you um, realize eventually how much money it actually costs you because whether people believe it or not, it does cost a fortune, especially if you're an owner. You're paying for the land. You're paying employees. You're tipping every set. This all adds up. You're actually furnishing your club. You have, to, if you buy a club from a store, okay, that's one thing. If you have a custom build, if it's 3D, if it's mesh, all of these factors add up to a lot of money. Um, keeping a club open is not easy. It takes money, a great team, and people who like coming to your establishment. With the big clubs of yesterday, gone, such as like Beachwood, Gall, Sleek, club traffic now also is spread out all over SL. There's a lack of 24-hour clubs with only two really being left, such as Energy Club that's over six years old and the relatively new SKU Club. Um, this has left a void for many people. Um, well, I have noticed I that. Back to differ uh, because there is uh, also uh, the dead uh, Dettis place, I believe, for the eighties club, and uh, there is a demonic club and several other rock clubs. There, are, there are other clubs in other genres, 
Uh, I'm, oh. I think I'm sp speaking more specifically of, let's say, the electronic music genre, because that's what I do. Um, there are other clubs like Ambrosia uh, and Retro and uh, Res and clubs like that that people do go to. Um, not my choice, because it's not my type of music. However, right now in the club scene, there's a lack of, in my opinion, as a club owner, there's a lack of quality clubs. Unfortunately. Right, okay, right. And I think on. we should address um, Kane's question there. Oh, also. Kane's question. Yeah, we, we will just, um, before we move on, I just would like uh, to um, uh, translate uh, Chicago Sex comment, because I like it so much. He says, it's easy to become a millionaire club owner in Second Life if you have to start with a two million. And that's, that's so true. But, uh, it's, it's very true. Okay, let's come back to Kane's question. Uh, would you like to read it? Or would you like me to read it? Uh, me? Um, okay. No, Rick. Rick, I'm sorry, I didn't hear um, you. Sure, no problem. Um, well, Kane was asking, um, as we all know, the club scene is not in a good place. Uh, why do club owners not get, you know, and sort this out rather than ignore it? Uh, rather than allow it to carry it in, uh, most like the issue uh, comes from clubs and the groups. Um, if we're all supposed to be here and have fun, why is there so much um, BS in the club scene, do you think? Well, I'm wondering, do we have any um, not successful club owners over here to answer this question? Anybody? Uh, okay, well, so I, all I have have opinions. I have a success. I has. I have a successful sim. I've been that that basically pays for everything, and I've been making money for ten years. But I don't deal with the club scene as much as you, all of you seem to do. I mean, you're, you know, DJs and the singers. I've I came into Second Life solely to deal with live music and live musicians, and and they for many years dealt with the same issues that clubs are now dealing with the DJs and the singers. But what's happened is, is that the clubs and the, the dancing and the DJs and the singers have pushed out the majority of the live playing musicians. When I first came in here, it was about people who actually were writing songs and who were independent artists trying to sell a record and create a new, you know, actually have a career. And now we have a massive amount of everybody who wants to be involved in music because let's face it, music is great. So but it's, it's kind of like all of the DJs and the karaoke singers have kind of come in and pushed, they've pushed out a lot of the, you know, musicians and, and all of the musicians used to have the same issues we're dealing with club owners and clubs dealing with musicians and now it's it's just changed it's all still seems to be the same thing you know but uh, with with new players and uh you know i i deal with i deal with all these musicians every day who come in here and go you know you're talking about you know what uh, attracts people to you know a club and i would imagine now with, with it's not only building a community for your club but it's also having like a great dj or a great singer that's that helps to build your traffic so it used to be great musicians now it's great singers and djs that are that are involved and it's kind of the whole the whole uh landscape has shifted as, as especially for musicians and it's really kind of the hard thing for uh, i come from a different place i am a professional musician in real life i came in here to play music originally and so am i man so, so what happened but what happened was I, this is the thing imagine that you go to school for 15 years to become a top surgeon a brain surgeon and you spend 15 years studying books and going to school and spending all that time. And one day you walk into the hospital and there are 500 people there going, my spouse says I'd make a great surgeon because I cut the beef really well in the kitchen and I just love brain surgery and I'm gonna come and do it for free. Oh and that's that's so that's so kind of what's happened to the music. Yes, exactly. Well, I, I, we have, I we see have what you're saying, of, but we have a massive amount 
of hobbyists who are all interested in music. Not not a lot of studied musicians are here. There's a lot of yeah, amateur of hobbyist people who come in and play here. And as a result of that, a lot of the musicians have kind of fallen by the wayside. And I would imagine the same thing will happen with the DJs and the karaoke singers and the clubs. I think we're all in the same kind of um, we're all in the same, you know, bowl here. Every the same thing that's happened to musicians is going uh, to bones. happen. To Excuse me, you are getting carried away a little. A little no, so bones, it's already yeah. happening. It's already happening and it already exists. You have okay. newcomers, same thing. They're coming to the club life. Boom, they open a club. Boom, they fill it with alts. Boom, instant traffic. More people see it on map. People come. But they're not, they don't have listeners. This is a very right. common practice in SL. And this is the new SL, unfortunately. So uh -huh. what, well, that's what, the way it is. What, but I don't feel that, um, I don't feel DJs have pushed musicians out. I mean, it's no, more of a no, matter of what people want to listen to and i mean we can't control that you no know, i'm not I I one thing I is would, pushed i didn't mean to imply that not 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 at all oh, i okay, think there's okay. room for everybody here really exactly and I don't sure think, sure i don't think anybody's pushed anybody out i just think there's been a real shift in people's interest and i think because of the massive amount of people who are who love music and are involved in it and with computers and everything i think there's you know Let's face it, I've heard just as many bad singers as I've had heard bad DJs as I've heard bad musicians. Picky <laughs> Head, picky head says, excuse me. Ones, just as many good ones as well. So that's, you know. Well, so I, and I understand. Um, um, I, no, no, I, know, I understand. It's been my job to, as a record um, label owner, to, to Rick, judge vocals. Please, sure. Rick, please listen to me. Uh, I just want to say that this is having a set soon like uh, we already know she is very busy <laughs> the, yeah this year uh, as i know you also uh, train hosts that's right yes i do i train in um uh club retro i'm a senior host there at club retro okay. uh, so i would like to ask you uh, before your time runs out um could you please, uh, tell us if they tell you why they want to join this scene if there are so many um, like DJs and hosts already? Uh, well, I'm not in charge of hiring them. Uh, the, the management hires them. I just train who they give me. But when I train, I don't just go over host skills. I also find out what viewer they're on. I try to help them with their settings that will help them to host easier. Uh, different viewers have different uh, good things like radar or pre-sayings or different things like that so i try to help them get set up that way but i also stress to them the most important part of your job are the vips greeting the vips and talking to the vips are the most important part of your job saying your little sayings and please donate to the sim and please hit the vote box and please all that i don't overdo that but I just don't. The DJs also ask, but we try to keep that to a minimum. I don't ask for donations or tips for my DJs or anything for more than three times a shift. If the DJ's good, he's going to get tips. You don't have to promote him. If he's a good DJ, he's going to get the tips anyway. But yes, I do promote him. And it's usually, I'll, I'll see, like, I'll look at their tip jars. And you can get their schedule. You can get join this group. You can get free shirts. And you can also give them some Linden Lovin'. You know, and I will promote him in that way. Uh, but I, I will sit down and I'll talk to that host. And before they actually get hired, I'll say yay or nay to the management. Because oh. if I don't see their attitude is there, I don't see that they, you know, I have to teach them how to do uh, notices and how to post events and, you know, all the other good things that go along with the host. And uh, if I don't see year. that in them, I'll tell them no. Uh, there is a question from the audience. Ella asks, uh, what do you train a host? Uh, to spam gestures, to send out uh, mass te teleports? What do you train? Uh, I don't train mass teleports. I don't believe in mass teleports. Uh, I believe in spamming your friends list, but once at the beginning of your shift, not twice. Uh, you know, you just tell them where you're at and everything once. And but I don't, I never talk about mass TPs because to me that's annoying to me, so I don't talk about that. But I train them to, uh, you know, they do have to know how to send out their notices and where to send them out as a drop down or in a, a group chat, uh, how to make them up. Uh, 
I don't like a lot of gestures on myself. I take gestures and I take them off the gestures and I put them on a note card and I copy and I paste them because it takes up less room in chat. When you're trying to follow that chat and you've got 15 people in that club all talking, a long gesture can blow you out of the water. And then you miss something, and I have to scroll back up. So I try to teach them not to be doing that, you know, not, not to use long gestures, not to use a lot of gestures with sound, because then it drowns the music. And, you know, and I talk to them about all the little stuff that a lot of trainees don't, a lot of tra host trainees don't cover a lot of that kind of stuff. They cover what the club wants you to say and what the club wants you to do in the rules, and that's it. Well, that doesn't make a host. That of does course. not make the host. You have to know other things to get into there to do the host. And I am so very, very sorry, but it's past my starting time for my shift. I want to thank you all very much for having me here today. I have enjoyed uh, this, this immensely. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Absolutely. Any final nice words for the audience, by the way? Well, just a quick word, maybe uh, something you want to say. To the audience? Yeah, of course. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for your questions. Uh, I am at Grease Lightning. I'm getting ready to head over uh, to Muddy's right now, and I'm in Muddy's country, and I am in Club Retro. And any time that you would like to come to any of my clubs, I'd be honored to have you there, and I will open you with open arms. Thank you very much, nice to meet you. Well, Thank nice you. To meet you. Nice to meet mm, all of nice you, you and, and have yes. a wonderful, wonderful SL time. Thank you very much. You too. Hey, hey well, I, I wanted to say something. I got, my, muddy, I got my muddies on my head. Okay. Bye, everybody. Take care. Hey, this uh, just, I just wanted to respond to one thing. Kane, I think what I was saying was that all, all of these issues are have to do with why the club scene has the those problems and why they haven't been resolved. I didn't mean to go off point. Um, that's kind of the point I was trying to make. 